Hello everyone. Welcome to the series on oral habits. In this video, we will learn about bruxism, its classification, etiology, clinical findings and management. Bruxism can be defined as the non-functional habitual contact of teeth that may include grinding, clenching or tapping of teeth. It can be classified as daytime or diurnal and nighttime or nocturnal bruxism. Daytime bruxism refers to the conscious or subconscious grinding of teeth during the day. It is usually silent except in patients with organic brain disorders and it can occur along with parafunctional habits such as chewing pencil, nails, cheeks or lips. On the other hand, nocturnal bruxism involves subconscious grinding of teeth characterized by rhythmic patterns of masseter electromyographic activity. The factors that can lead to bruxism include occlusal discrepancies, psychological factors, CNS disturbances, hereditary factors, allergy, oral habits, systemic factors and occupational factors. Occlusal discrepancies due to faulty restoration, defective occlusal contact or malocclusion can lead to bruxism as they alter the afferent impulses originating in the periodontium. Psychological factors include repressed anger, aggression or anxiety that causes nervousness and tension. CNS disturbances include cortical lesions, cerebral palsy, mental retardation and tuberculous meningitis. Hereditary factors include parents with bruxism habits. In allergy, intermittent allergic edema of the eustachian tube mucosa can increase negative pressure in the tympanic cavity leading to nocturnal bruxism. Oral habits such as chronic biting and chewing of toys and pencils, thumb sucking, tongue thrusting and mouth breathing can lead to bruxism. Systemic factors include magnesium deficiency, gastrointestinal disturbances leading to chronic abdominal distress, subclinical nutritional and vitamin deficiencies, and endocrine disorders such as hyperthyroidism. And lastly, the occupational factors include over-enthusiastic students, compulsive overachievers, or athletes. The clinical findings of bruxism depend on the frequency, intensity, and age of the patient. Dental findings include increased tooth mobility, may be more in the morning, non-functional patterns of occlusal wear and atypical wear facets, increased tooth sensitivity due to excessive abrasion of enamel, dull percussion sounds, and soreness to biting stress. Bruxism can also cause tooth fracture or restoration fracture. Sometimes pulp may be exposed due to attrition leading to dental abscess. Along with these, the patient presents with tenderness of jaw muscles, usually lateral pterygoid and masseter, muscle fatigue or tightness on waking up, unilateral or bilateral hypertrophy of masseter, and the pattern of muscle sensitivity follows lateral pterygoid, medial pterygoid and then the masseter. The patient will present with dull and unilateral pain in the temporomandibular joints. There will be crepitation and clenching within the joint, restriction of mandibular movements, deviation of chin during mandibular movements and worn or perforated disc with wear patterns that correlates with condyral remodeling. Some other findings include chronic headaches and facial pain, grinding and tapping sounds, soft tissue trauma and small ulceration or ridging on the buccal mucosa opposite the molar teeth. Now coming to the management part, the various treatment modalities include occlusal adjustment, occlusal splint, bite plane or bite guard, restorative treatment, psychotherapy, relaxation therapy, medications, electronic method and orthodontic treatment. Occlusal adjustment involves correction of any prematurities or occlusal interferences in restoration. Occlusal splint involves bite guard worn at night to prevent continued abrasion. It can also help in passive stretching of painful muscle fibers by raising the bite. In restorative treatment, endodontic treatment with crown is indicated if the abrasion is severe and pulp exposure is imminent. Psychotherapy involves 
counseling the patient that can help to decrease tension and create habit awareness it can also lead to an increase in voluntary control and reduced tooth para function in relaxation training patient is instructed to tense the muscle group in consideration and relax thereby training the patient to relax the muscle group voluntarily hypnosis and conditioning are also indicated in cases that have a central cause medications include vapocoolants such as ethyl chloride for pain within the tmj area local anesthetic injections directly into the tmj or muscles tranquilizers sedatives and muscle relaxants placebos are used to rule out psychological cause diazepam can be given for few days to alter sleep arousal and anxiety levels and low dose tricyclic antidepressants are used to inhibit the amount of rem sleep the electric method involves electrogenulanic stimulation for muscle relaxation orthodontic treatment involves correction of malocclusion such as class 2 and class 3 that may predispose to bruxism so that was all about bruxism for more information on the topic you can download our app where we have uploaded detailed notes on oral habits in the upcoming video we will look into another oral habit till then if you found the video helpful and informative then do like the video share it with your friends and subscribe the channel for more such content